Hello everyone and welcome to uh, our session Driving AI Enabled Financial Performance uh, using IBM Planning Analytics with uh, Watson uh, of course powered by TM1. My name is Sufyan Azizi. I'm the Program Director of Development, Cognos Analytics, Planning Analytics and Controller, our BI uh, Planning and Consolidation uh, Suite for Performance Management with me, I have the pleasure to introduce you to James Williams, Development Manager for Planning Analytics, and Julian Solano, Development Manager for Planning Analytics. The three of us, we work together. We're based in the IBM Ottawa lab, and uh, we collaborate to bring you uh, Planning Analytics workspace and ship it to you monthly. Please note, IBM statements regarding its plans, directions, and intent are subject to change or withdrawal without a notice uh, at IBM's sole discussion. As a matter of fact, during this session, we will only talk about things that are available to you, no future. However, I'd like to cover a few things about our vision and our approach, and then introduce you to the demo, which is the, mesa, the, meat, sorry, the meat of this, uh, 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 of this session. This is why we do what we do. Our vision is simply put to enable our customers to plan for anything, to drive future ready business performance with an integrated, easy to manage, and extensible planning and analytics application everywhere. Our approach The mission for us is to elevate planning using AI. You may be thinking artificial intelligence. We think of it as augmented intelligence within the planning space to improve outcomes for our customers. Is to, our mission statement is to empower you to plan, monitor, and analyze your business, starting with a strong analytic data foundation connecting operational performance with financial outcomes, aligning initiatives with resources, corporate objectives, and market events to optimize outcomes. Simply put, to be ready for everything. So our vision is to plan for anything, and our mission is to be ready for everything. And hence, plan for anything, be ready for everything. Our demo. So in the next 20 minutes or so, I'll pass it on to Jimmy and uh, Julian to play the role of a sales uh, manager uh, optimizing uh, territory uh, assignments for his uh, sales team. So both of them are going to be playing no longer the development, the software development manager role, which is their day-to-day uh, work, but actually to put a hat of a sales manager uh, where he, uh, where they both will showcase parts of the new IBM Planning Analytics user experience. We can cover everything. They will start by reviewing, Jimmy will start by reviewing the current sales target and adjust territory and customer assignments. So a sales manager has a bunch of customers bunch of products that he says to those customers in different territories in his sales, uh, his sales team, each having a quota or a title. So Jimmy's going to review the sales targets and try to adjust the territory and customer assignments to optimize his, his sales plan. He will build a plan and distribute work assignments to his team. Part of them is part of that team is actually Julian. Uh, to extend the sales plan model uh, with forecasting. So Julian then will perform the forecast, the sales forecast, using the built-in predictive forecasting functionality that we've had in Planning Analytics Workspace for some time right now. And at the same time, as a uh, comparison basis, uh, to also perform a similar forecast using the new Watson Machine Learning Integration. We've, integration, we've integrated planning analytics, uh, the planning analytics platform 
with the uh, Watson Studio, Watson Machine Learning uh, capabilities that exist in Cloud Pack for Data and Cloud Pack for Data as a service to convince you that this is the best data in AI platform and this is a use case, sales and territory planning uh, example. Note that the sample data and books that we will be showing are available for download in our accelerators catalog, community.ibm.com slash accelerators. Also, you can easily get your hand on the software so you can actually do everything that Jimmy and Julian are gonna show you uh, yourself interactively uh, by signing to our 30-day free trial of planning analytics, which you can find at ibm.com slash planning, and you'll see a button that uh, will uh, will ask you to start your 30-day uh, free, free trial. I'm gonna pass it to Jimmy and Julian so they could get into the meat of this presentation, which is the demo. On to you, Jimmy. So for those of you who haven't seen this before, this is the new user experience for planning analytics with Watson that we launched late last year and that we continue to iterate on with each monthly release. So let me start telling you uh, about some of our new features. So firstly, we have a new way to navigate planning analytics using this hamburger menu in the top left. From here, you can easily create new assets such as uh, books, uh, workbenches and applications. And you can also quickly access the pages uh, that help you with your key planning and analysis tasks. So here you can build, view and manage applications. You can create, share and manage content such as books and views. Here you can build and manage your TM1 assets, your cubes, your dimensions, your rules, etc. And beneath that we have easy access to your content. Uh, and if you're an administrator like I am, in this particular environment, uh, I, I can go here to manage my users, my groups, my databases, and so on. So that's the top left. Over in the top right of our page is our new Watson powered cognitive learning pane. So what we've done here is take our vast wealth of documentation, our videos, and our blogs, and fed them into the Watson discovery service. Uh, this now means that we can use natural language to easily search through all of that content to find what you're looking for in an instant. So for example, I might be trying to remember how to build a map visualization, so I can try searching something here uh, for like map viz. And now I have the instructions that I need uh, to follow to do this available to me without ever having to leave the product. Uh, and we can also do nice things like show content here related to uh, the specific user who's logged in, for example, based on the role that they have. We can show them relevant documentation based on the, the things that they're able to do in the product and also even based on their habits in the product, the things that they do frequently. Back on the home page itself, you can see that we also provide these quick launch tiles here to get you stuck in quickly into your, your key tasks. And again, these are role specific. So these change, these quick launch tiles change based on what you're able to do in the product, providing you with what's meaningful to you. At the bottom of the page, you can find recently opened files, files you've favorited, and uh, applications and plans that you have access to. So plans and applications are a new feature that we introduced at the end of last year, and we're going to build a plan shortly. But before we do, let's just jump into a, an example scenario sales plan uh, and use it to illustrate some of the features of planning analytics and some of the recent improvements to our dashboarding capabilities. So as you likely know, sales planning is a, typically a highly collaborative and iterative process, which includes various people in an organization that take both bottom up and top down approaches. Once overall revenue targets get established, sales leaders need to create uh, territory and quota plans that are achievable. And then they must continuously manage those plans to make sure that sales targets are met. So right now I'm just gonna walk you through part of a pre-built sales plan, um, just showing off some of the features of plan analytics and some of the improvements to our dashboard. Incidentally, uh, you can get your hands on this uh, yourself. It's available for download from the IBM Accelerator catalog. Uh, as part of our user experience overhaul, we brought in the dashboarding technology from our sister product, Cognos Analytics. 
This provides a much improved set of capabilities and a richer visualization experience over our previous book framework. Uh, even better, if you're already familiar with Cognos Analytics, you'll be able to start building dashboards in Planning Analytics in no time at all. So here is a sales dashboard which tracks KPIs and provides summary level analytics of the entire sales organization. Currently, we're viewing um, data related to the Americas, so let's drill down into New England as that's the territory I know we're interested in updating in this scenario. And you can see when I, when I change that selection, all of the charts and data on the page updated in real time in response to my selection. Uh, in Planning Analytics with Watson, you can synchronize these widgets uh, across a sheet or even across all of the sheets within the same book. If we look into the Territory Assignments plan uh, sheet, um, we can easily see how the New England Territory has been split across the different sales reps. So here are the different uh, regions in the Territory and here are the assignments to them. Now in this scenario, I know that Sam Ruse has recently left the company and so I'm going to reassign Sam's uh, territory to another sales rep. Uh, Planning Analytics has this uh, concept of a personal sandbox, which lets you model changes uh, to see their potential impact without committing them to the base data. So it lets me uh, explore some what-if scenarios before actually committing it. So I'm going to reassign this to Camille. And because I'm working in a sandbox, you can see that uh, the, my changes have uh, been colored in blue and the impact of those changes is also in blue. This means that they are not yet committed to the base data, they are just in my sandbox for now. So let's look at the customer assignments as well. Now I can see that Sam is assigned to Feedfish, so let's reassign Sam's uh, Feedfish to Camille as well. And again, you can see the changes are in blue, meaning it's uh, all part of my uh, sandbox scenario. And I can see the impact of those changes on my rep territory plan tab. You can see the impact, the changes to uh, Camille's assignments. Now, what I've noticed here uh, that is missing from this particular dashboard uh, is a chart that shows me how the sales reps targets compare to one another. So just to show you the visualization capabilities in planning analytics, I'm going to create everyone's favorite visualization, the pie chart. So I'm going to drag a pie chart onto the canvas here. And now I just need to find my data. It's in the sample sales database, and it is the territory plan cube that I'm interested in. And I just need to drag and drop the parts of my data that I'm interested in in plotting. So I can drag the sales team onto the segments, meaning that each member of my sales team will appear as a segment in the pie. And I'm just going to switch this down to New England sales reps, because they're the, the people I'm interested in. And for the size, I wish that to be one of my measures, the final target measure. So I'm just going to drag that on as well. And there you go. Now I can easily see how each of my sales reps targets compare to one another. And there's much more I can do now in terms of customization. Uh, it's very, very flexible. I can change the color palette, for example, to, to brand it like my business and like the rest of the chart. I'm able to add titles um, to the chart as well. Let me just align this nicely so that it looks good. And there we go. So the last thing I want to mention, uh, which you've probably noticed was I've been creating the graph is some of the improvements that we gained by incorporating the Cognos dashboard. You have much more control now of the, the layout of the page, the positioning of widgets using, uh, using the grid and using snapping features. And you also saw the theming work that helps customers brand their, their dashboards to, to match their company's colors. So hopefully that's whet your appetite to want to play with our new dashboarding experience, but let's not waste any more time getting into our uh, AI features that Julian's going to show. So to set him up, 
I'm going to first create a plan and assign him some work to do. So prior to plans and applications being introduced to planning analytics with Watson, customers had limited ability to group related assets and distribute work assignments to their team and also report on planning progress. So plans and applications provide the ability to define planning stages, to assign users to specific steps in the planning process, and uh, it also allows planning managers to monitor the progress of plan activities and better understand the status of each of those steps. On top of that, there's useful features like announcements and the ability to open and close a plan. So for timeliness, here is one that I made earlier. Now, as I'm an administrator of this plan, uh, it opens in edit mode. So this is, I'm able to edit this. As you can see, it's got a name and a short description, as well as an image which appears on the, the landing page. Um, and applications allow you to group your assets uh, into these different sections. So in this, this particular plan here, I have four sections. So this is the way in which we can collect, uh, a meaningful way to collect these assets together and to assign work to two people. So for each section, um, if I go to edit it, you can provide a name, a description, an optional due date, and whether or not uh, the user completing this task has to submit to say they have completed this task. I can also select the assets that are relevant to this task and which groups of users are also relevant to this task. Uh, I can then also view whether or not users have yet submitted it. So I can see here that currently the modelers have not yet completed this particular task. Now, as we're part of the way through the planning process already for this plan, uh, you can see that the plan is in an open state. This makes it visible to any users who are associated with this plan. If this plan were closed, when they logged into Plan Analytics, they would not see this plan. So the tasks that I've created in this plan are first uh, to ask the modeling team to use our new modeling workbench to extend the model so that our analysts can do some AI-based forecasting. So now I'm going to hand it over to Julian, who's going to show you the modeling workbench, and then I'll also complete the next two steps to show you how you can do forecasting using AI with planning analytics with Watson. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to log in as a modeler, given that the modeler is the one that has one step assigned on the sales plan. Now that I am in planning analytics, I can see that an application or plan has been assigned to me and I can now perform my step. So now I can see the details of my step that require me to add enough support to create versions to actually say forecast for this plan on different slices. So simply by using the dimension editor, I can do that. Now, I want to showcase a new piece of functionality that is shipping with Planning Analytics Workspace called the Modeling Workbench. So I can create a new workbench. I could do this step on the dashboard, but I wanted also to show and try how it can be done on the new dedicated Modeling Workbench. So I simple double click and I get an automatic uh, layout that will put my dimension on this tab panel and I can perform my step. I need to create a few slices. The forecast slide will host the actual values that are going to be coming out of the PA prediction. The forecast high and low are slices that will hold data for the confidence levels. So I can, uh, given the capabilities of the PA forecast, we can also tell how high and how low this forecast can go based on the algorithm. So these three slices will help for the PA forecast. Another piece of this demo is to show how WML will help a data scientist and an analyst to create a forecast. So I will create another slice for that purpose. Now that I have all I need, I commit my work, now it's saved, 
remember I went uh, away from the dashboard and landed in a workbench. Here, if I refresh this dimension, you'll see the slices I just created. And now I can say that my work is done and my step has been completed. For the remaining steps on the plan, I'm going to log in as an analyst. Same as in the modeler case, I have a plan and by opening it I will see the details of this plan and the steps I need to perform. So here are the two steps that are assigned to me. First, forecast to end of year using the PA forecast and the second step will be to forecast using WML. A tab has been prepared for me to perform the first step. So here are the two time series I want to forecast. The modeler already prepared some of the slices for me to save this information. So let's start performing that task. So given that the data ends on December 2019 and for the sake of this sample, we're going to per perform a forecast starting January 2020. Ending at December 2021. To take uh, advantage of the slices that the modeler created for the analyst, I can actually declare in this area of the forecast panel where the data is going to go. It is very common not to write the forecasted data into the actuals. So what we need to do is to pick the version dimension and select the specific slices. Okay, another thing I can do is save some of the details of this forecast into comments in the TM1 database. Before running the forecast, as you can see, the forecast is a feature that is rich in options to control how you're going to spread your data, if you want to ignore any sort of time slot, or if you want to save data on consolidations. Before actually saving to TM1, I can perform a preview that will give me an idea how this will perform. So I can see all the time series I'm picking and getting the results before altering my database. Another important piece of this forecast feature is that I can see some of the statistical details that will give me also uh, information about the model that has been picked and the accuracy and all the statistical parameters that will give me confidence about the results of this forecast. So now that I've seen the preview, we are ready to run a forecast. So, of course, I see no data because I am looking at the actual slice. But if I go and switch the slice to the forecasted ones, you'll see the data that came back from the engine. Same as the data that is on the high and lows. So one last thing I can do with this forecast is for whoever is going to consume this book, I can create a chart that in includes the forecast information. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to keep this tab but I want to duplicate it. Now that the cross tab is being duplicated, I can convert this to a different type of visualization to see the forecasted values. As you can see, here is a chart that we can place in our dashboard that includes the forecast information. Now that I perform the step, I can mark it as done. For my next step, I need a data scientist to create a DO model beforehand. I'm going to quickly show you how you can do that. 
First, you need to create a new project on the Cloud Perform Data Platform. In this case, it's called PAWML Integration Demo. In there, that you can declare your assets, which in this case are TM1 views, and a connection to the TM1 server, in this case called Sample Sales. From there, we create a decision optimization experiment called, in this case, WML Forecast. First, you can preview your data so you know that the data you're pulling from TM1 is correct. Second, you write a Python model to perform the forecast. In this case, we have a very simplistic model. Now that you have the experiment ready and the model ready, you can promote that model to a deployment space. From the deployment space, you can create jobs that then can be run from PA. Now, Planning Analytics is ready to run this forecast. Before going into the analyst case again, I want to show you the new capabilities of Planning Analytics in terms of planning integration with uh, Watson Machine Learning. For that purpose, I'm going to log in as an administrator and very beautifully show you the new capabilities of PA. If you go to the Administration tab, you'll see a new tile called Integrations. In there, you'll see the deployment spaces that you have configured to be able to connect Planning Analytics with WML. Once you all have provided all this information, you can test your connection. Let's go back to the analyst case and perform another forecast this time using WML to store the data in a different slice. To do that, I will drag a new action button into our dashboard and then point the action button to the AI job that we created in the CP4D platform. For that, you need to go into the properties of the action button and then look for the tab called Run AI Job. A list of the jobs that's been configured in CP4D and linked in the admin panel should be there. We pick the appropriate job, and then by getting out of edit mode, we can execute now the WML job. We are going to get a notification that's been submitted and shortly after it should be completed. There it is. Now we can change the slide to the slide we pick to save that WML forecast, and here is the data. Now I'm ready to submit my step and mark this plan as done. And this is how you can use WML and PA out of the box forecasting to perform these two operations. Okay, thank you, Julian. So now I'm back uh, to the home page and I'm logged in as the administrator. Now if I reopen the plan that you saw earlier, I'm able to inspect each stage and I can analyze uh, all of the required submissions. I can see that 100% of the submissions have come in. I can take a look at those submissions and I can see the comment that Julian has left to let me know that he's completed the task. And what I would be able to do is take a look at the associated book, uh, see what Julian did, check that I'm happy with uh, with the forecast in this instance and if I'm not I could hit the reset button that will send the task back to Julian he can then uh, do a little bit more work until we're both happy with with the results uh, but in this case I'm pretty happy so I'm just going to click cancel and now I'm able to close this plan should I wish um, and we can think about moving on to the next task so there you have it there is a quick rundown of planning analytics with Watson Thank you very much.